Hello and welcome to the first video in the graphics and engineering design module where we will be starting things off talking about visualization. So why visualization to start? Well, technical design is a huge part of the engineering profession and it can involve anything from the design of products like automotive parts or biomedical implants all the way to the design of systems like chemical plants, water treatment facilities, power systems, and so on. In any case, a critical skill in all stages of the design process is the ability to communicate ideas, and it's the objective of this course to develop effective communication skills in technical design and graphics. And you guessed it, that starts off with the ability to visualize. So in this lecture, we will examine two visualization tools, sketching and solid modeling, as well as various modes of visualization called projections that are used to represent 3D objects on paper or in two dimensions. Specifically, we are going to focus on isometric pictorials and multi-view drawings, which are standard projections used in professional engineering drawings. So let's first consider the complementary roles of sketching and solid modeling in engineering design. In the early stages of the design process, sketching is one mode of communication that encourages brainstorming and idea generation. And once a design is further developed, solid modeling through computer-aided design or CAD software enables much more accurate and precise visualization. Also, on top of enabling better visualization and documentation, solid models can also be used for further assessment of a design. So you could use a solid model for computer simulation of mechanism kinematics, for prototyping, finite element analysis, computational fluid dynamics, and the list goes on. So on the slide here, we see an example of a sketch and a model for a DIY computerized numerical control or CNC engraver. And this was a design that was first brainstormed on paper prior to solid modeling and subsequent 3D printing. So this just gives you an idea of how both sketching and solid modeling are important in the overall design process. And let's consider another design problem. Let's say we have an L bracket that we use to mount a shelf to a wall. The design shown on the right can't support the required weight for this particular problem, so we want to propose a design to make it stronger. After fully defining the problem objectives and constraints, we want to brainstorm ideas, and sketching is the perfect tool for brainstorming. For instance, one idea might be to make the L bracket thicker, or we could even add a rib in the middle to support uh, higher loads, or perhaps we could even add two ribs on either side. These are just a few ideas out of many possibilities but sketching allows us to quickly record and visualize these ideas so that we can compare them to each other. And once we settle on an idea, like the second option shown here, we can then go ahead and generate a solid model in which the part geometry is completely specified. Everything from the bracket height, the width, the depth, all the way to the positions of the holes, the thickness of the rib, and even the radii of the rounds on the bracket. So this example shows how both sketching and solid modeling play a critical role in conveying ideas in the engineering design process. Tips and tricks on sketching are provided in an accompanying video to support your development of the sketching skill, but the focus of the labs in this course will remain on solid modeling, which has rapidly become a crucial tool in the de detailed design of the engineering design process. So sketching is about being quick, generating ideas, whereas solid modeling is about being correct. Solid models serve as a digital representation of a part, and they provide a complete, unique, and unambiguous representation of that part with an accurate description of its geometry. Because it completely defines everything perfectly, a solid model is a powerful tool with many end uses. For instance, once a solid model is created, it's really simple to make quick revisions to parts, which affords flexibility in design. If we just go back to our L bracket example, for instance, we could easily change the rib thickness by updating a single number without needing to redo the entire model, which is especially convenient in the iterative design process. Solid models can also be used as a modern means for design documentation in terms of generating engineering drawings. These drawings contain all the necessary dimensions required to manufacture a part, and they're therefore crucial deliverables of the design process. So that's another thing solid models are useful for. And since they again, completely defined part geometry, they can be used for things like simulation and analysis. So we can use solid modeling software to show how parts can be assembled together and how they interact, an example being this door hinge assembly and the animation of it. 
And we can also perform further analysis on solid models like static stress analysis on our L bracket, for instance, where we place it under some load and see how it deflects. Altogether, solid modeling is an extremely valuable tool in design. There's so many possibilities on what we can do with it. So with both sketching and solid modeling of 3D parts, we are faced with the challenge of visualizing a 3D object graphically, either on paper or on a screen as you're seeing it right now. The mapping of a 3D object onto a 2D plane is called a planar projection, which can be divided into multiple classes, including 2D drawings of particular faces, as shown in this multi-view drawing of our L bracket, as well as pictorials that convey the object's three-dimensional shape in a single view, some of which are shown here. Such projections are categorized based on the location of the center of projection, that is, the location of the observer with respect to the object, as well as the orientation of the object with respect to the observer or the projection plane. So in this course, we're going to focus on isometric pictorials and multi-view projections, which are just some subcategories of overall projections. So let's consider what their defining characteristics are. Both of these classes fall under the parallel projection category, which differs from perspective projections by the location of the center of projection. The center of projection is where projection lines, which are also known as sight lines, converge to a single point, like the eyes of the observer in this diagram. Perspective projection is how our eyes see the world, where the center of projection or observer is some finite distance from the object. Unfortunately, 3D objects do not visualize well when projected onto a 2D screen like this because the parallel lines on an object don't necessarily remain parallel in the projection. And this can be seen with the one point projection of a cube that we see here. So perspective projection can be used in rendering to generate photorealistic images of finished models, since this is how we see in real life. But parallel projections remain the go-to visualization for solid modeling. As the name suggests, parallel projections are obtained by placing the center of projection an infinite distance away from the object, which means that parallel lines on an object remain parallel in the projection. Another feature of the parallel projection is that the image size does not depend on the distance of the object to the projection plane. The same cannot be said for perspective projection. So this covers the first distinguishing feature of planar projections with example perspective and parallel projections of simple cubes shown below. This isometric representation of a cube is really just one type of parallel projection, specifically a certain type of orthographic projection. So the next thing we have to do is distinguish oblique from orthographic. The difference between these two categories is the angle between the projection lines and the projection plane. In oblique projections, the projection lines intersect the plane at some oblique angle that we'll call alpha. If that angle is 45 degrees, we end up with something special called a cavalier oblique projection, where the depth dimension appears twice its true length. And if alpha is about 63 degrees, we end up with a cabinet oblique projection, where the depth dimension is now about half of its true length. So this is shown in the diagram of these oblique projections of a cube. We can imagine we're viewing the cube from the top, the projection lines bring the projection down onto the plane that we see on edge to give us our oblique projections that we see below. In any case, the choice of alpha we can see has an impact on how the projection will appear. If the projection lines now are exactly perpendicular to the projection plane, then we end up with our other category, the orthogonal projection, as exemplified by this isometric pictorial. As we saw before, isometric pictorials are only one subcategory of orthographic projections, specifically a type of axonometric projection. So that is what we will consider next in comparison to multiviews, the other type of orthographic projection. These two types of projections are commonly used in solid modeling, each with a different intended effect of representation. For instance, axonometric pictorials are orthographic projections that are intended to produce a 3D view of an object while multi-view representations combine multiple two-dimensional views of the object to give an overall visualization of the object in 3D, and each of these have their own benefits and downfalls. So keeping with our previous examples, these diagrams below show these two types of projections for a simple cube, but it's important to recognize that these projections apply to an object of any shape, where the cube represents a bounding box that defines the maximum height, width, and depth of the object. 
the mutually perpendicular axes corresponding to the edges of this bounding box are referred to as our principal axes of an object. In axonometric projections, all three of these principal axes are inclined to the projection plane, meaning none of the principal faces of the bounding box are parallel to the projection plane, and this is what results in that three-dimensional looking view. With multi-view representation, two principal axes and one object face, or bounding box face, are parallel to the projection plane, resulting in a two-dimensional view instead. Now, axonometric projections are further subdivided into three categories, isometric, diametric, and trimetric pictorials. In isometric pictorials, all angles between our principal axes are 120 degrees, which gives us the name isometric pictorial because isometric means equal measure. In diametric pictorials, you guessed it, two out of the three angles between the principal axes are equal, and in trimetric pictorials, none of them are equal. So why do these angles matter? Well, remember that because all of the faces are inclined to the projection plane in axonometric pictorials, all of our dimensions appear foreshortened or scaled, and the amount of foreshortening is related to that projection angle. For this reason, in the trimetric pictorial, all three axes are foreshortened by a different amount, and in diametric pictorials, two principal axes are equally foreshortened, and the third one is foreshortened by a different amount. And with isometric pictorials, all three axes are equally foreshortened, which preserves the relative proportions in all dimensions. And this is why isometrics are commonly used in CAD and why we will focus on isometric pictorials in the course. Again, since all the axes are equally foreshortened in an isometric pictorial, the height, width, and depth proportions are preserved for easy sketching and interpretation. To sketch an isometric pictorial of an object, an isometric underlay can be used or even drawn by hand as a guide, and this is essentially a 3D grid paper with the X and the Z dimensions directed up at 30 degrees from the horizontal, and the Y dimension is directed vertically. This will give you those isometric principal axes. Now, even though isometric pictorials give a clear 3D view of an object with the height, width, and depth proportions preserved, there are still some drawbacks associated with isometric drawings, namely the occurrence of foreshortening. Since all the axes are tilted away from the projection plane, edges all appear a little shorter than actual, about 82% of their true size. In addition, the tilt of the principal faces with respect to the projection planes means that features like circles appear elliptical and angles appear distorted. For this reason, Isometrics are not typically dimensioned as the size of features is not representative of their true size. In the two part images at the bottom right of the slide, we see a solid and a wireframe isometric pictorial of a part where the wireframe pictorial includes dashed lines called hidden lines that show features hidden in this view. It is clear that the wireframe isometric is far more detailed. However, the solid model is much cleaner and easier to interpret. For this reason, such hidden lines are also generally avoided in pictorials to ensure that clarity is prioritized overall. Now, there are some exceptions. A case where we might want to include hidden lines is in the event of a part with asymmetric features, like a series of holes on the back of this part. If this was the case, perhaps we'd consider including the hidden lines on this isometric. But overall, isometric and pictorials in general are intended to simply visualize an object and they're not intended to be used as working drawings from which a part is produced because one, they are distorted, and two, they can become quickly cluttered as seen with this relatively simple part that's dimensioned on the slide. So we need to consider another type of projection to use in working drawings for part dimensioning, and this is where multi-view drawings come in. In this video, we considered the role of sketching and solid modeling in the engineering design process as well as the various classes of projections that can be used to represent 3D objects graphically. We identified isometric pictorials as an excellent projection option for quick 3D visualization of parts, whereby object proportions are preserved. Even so, we identified that isometrics are not intended to be used as dimension working drawings from which a part is meant to be produced. For this, we need multi-views, which is the topic of the next video. Until next time. 